Welcome back to my garden. I've had quite a few surprises since spring, so I'm going to update you on the unexpected surprises, the progress I've made since spring, and the things that didn't go so well. But also, I need some help. So please let me know if you have any suggestions or ideas about what I can do with these challenges. Okay, so let's get into it. First of all, biggest of all, best of all, the arbor is finally gone. And oh my God, it makes such a difference. I can't believe I didn't do this sooner. It just opens up the whole garden. It was really such an eyesore because it was in such bad condition. And along the bottom of the garden bed, I've added these hydrangeas and they look so good. And I can't wait for next year because they're gonna be even bigger next year. Speaking of hydrangeas, the big ones that I put in earlier in the year have done fairly well. They haven't had any flowers and I think it's because they weren't watered properly because just after I made my last video about the garden and made all of my garden plans for the summer, I had to unexpectedly go to Australia for two months. And during that time, the garden was not well cared for. And so instead of really making the garden nicer and nicer over the summer, I abandoned it for two months and then had to spend for all of July and now most of August all I have been doing is like is rehabilitating it and getting the lawn back on track and everything like that. So I think those hydrangeas probably would have done better if they'd been watered, but at least they're alive, you know? So this is what it's looking like now. It's definitely an improvement, but also it's just back to where it basically was before I left. Now along the side, you may also already have noticed something new there that was another unexpected surprise while I was in Australia. This fence was put up by the neighbours while I was in Australia, so I just came back to a brand new fence. And I think it looks quite good actually. It's definitely taken away like the softness of that area. And so what I wanna do obviously is green it up again. If I'd have known it was going in, when we bought all of those laurels that we put around the edge, I would have got them more mature, but they'll, they'll get there eventually. But there's a few spaces now where I think we need to put some, and I think we'll get more mature ones there, perhaps two or three meters tall. So that's an upcoming project. And I think just, it's gonna look really, really good once that's all soft and green and tidy. So probably one to two years away, but yeah, here's the before picture come back in a year or two for the after picture. Now down here in the shed area, we burnt the fire that we had there, been gradually planting lawn seed. So it's starting to grow in where the fire was. And then also here around all the edges. I just, every time I go to the hardware store, I just buy one box and add it. Like I don't want it to be a bigger job than it needs to be. I just scatter them around the edges and I'm just mowing them. And my goal is basically to just fill in as much lawn as I can, really mostly for weed control. Like my intention is that at a later date, it's not gonna be lawn. And I do want to build some garden beds and, and everything, but just, just for it to stay manageable, for me to stay on top of the weeds, especially the brambles and the nettles, because they can be painful to interact with. So at the moment I have this tarp here. I've been moving this tarp around the garden. I really don't like using pesticides and it's so good at killing the weeds underneath. So I'll lay this down for about a month or so. And once I'm confident that the things underneath are not gonna grow back, I'll then add lawn seed there and move it around. And so that way I'm able to get on top of the weeds, but I'm not using pesticides. Just mowing it and staying on top of it should 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 be good enough for now. I also had a little unexpected project with buying some foxgloves that were massively discounted. So I've just thrown them into this garden bed just to add a bit of color for now. I think long term this garden bed is gonna move, but you know, I'm just taking it bit by bit and just working with what I've got for now until I can get to the point where I can do something more long term here. I must say they did have a lot of impact considering how cheap they were and they looked so good when I moved the solar lights there and had them lit up, especially like around sunset. They just looked really pretty. It's made me want to bring even more flowers into the garden. I think because our garden is so big and has so much greenery, flowers just really do start to bring a lot of beauty to the garden. 
Now we all know I already have a love of hydrangeas and I already wanted them in the garden. It's interesting, with the ones that I added this year, I got them in a variety of different colours. And look at this, see this purple hydrangea? Only a matter of days before, it was completely blue. What's really fascinating is that any of the hydrangeas that I plant in this top part of the garden seem to very quickly change to pink. However, the hydrangeas further down the garden are blue. So I did attempt to use the color changing stuff that changes the pH of the soil. I haven't seen any changes yet. Maybe I'll see changes next year. I will continue to use it because I, I do really want them to be blue or at least sort of like a purple color. But that's another thing you're gonna have to wait and see to see how that turns out. But okay, let's just do a few more quick updates on things around the garden. The apple tree, which was pruned earlier in the year, has got some apples on it, but nowhere near as many as last year. I'm hoping these will ripen up and maybe I can make myself a nice apple pie. And the hazelnut tree has hazelnuts on it. So if they mature and if I get enough, I'm gonna try and make my own Nutella. Now we're coming up to our third Christmas in this house and this pine tree has never produced any pine cones. So I'm crossing my fingers that maybe this year might be it. You can see the little signs of, of tiny little pine cones maybe growing, I'm not sure, but I'll definitely be doing some Christmas projects with them if they do appear. So now we've had summer, what are my next plans for the garden? Well. The rockery we're still working on. I've put down a tarp because there's all sorts of plants in there that are really difficult to deal with and I don't want to use pesticides. So I've just put down this tarp and my intention is that like next spring, hopefully, we'll pull it up and we can start to clear this area. I personally think that this is the best spot in the garden because when you look to your left, you see down the slope, right down to the wild section and all the oak trees. And, and then ahead of you is the magnolia and the pine trees. And then to the right is the flat lawn and the house. So it really does feel like you're completely surrounded 180 degrees. And it does really just feel like you're completely in the middle of the garden. Another thing I want to do is sort out these garden beds. I've put down cardboard here as weed control. I did this last year and believe it or not, the bluebells actually grow through the cardboard. Like they are pretty hardcore, but I don't mind because the bluebells aren't what actually bothers me. It's the brambles and things. So I'm still putting that down there. I need to think about my long-term plan. Obviously I got the hydrangeas at the top. I have been working on clearing this area here and I think I probably need to put a tarp down here as well to do the same thing. We've just got a lot of these grasses that grow and then they're, they're not that easy to remove. So, so I think that might be what we do there. But with this space in general behind that pine tree, there's quite a lot of space and it's not really utilized. I did want to put I did want to put some jasmine growing up there because it would smell really beautiful and grow up on that fence, but I didn't get around to it this year. So maybe that's a project for next year. Now an obvious project that I should probably do is the patio area. It is just looking real grim up there. Um, we sold the outdoor furniture. We're thinking about what to do next. <sighs> you know. It's, it's very ugly in contrast to like how nice the rest of the garden is, but you know, I'll get there. Now onto the challenges that I need your help with. There are two main things that I'm thinking what about. The first is a little bit of a conundrum. Even though I love having a sloped is garden, it? it is starting to cause a bit of problems with something. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Alfie, ball. We spend a lot of time chasing balls down the hill and I'd like to find an idea of something to plant that can catch the balls so they don't roll the whole way down the hill. And so the second problem is also child related. I do want to bring in some kind of climbing frame and slide and all of those things. We definitely have the space in our garden to dedicate to that, but I don't really know where to put it or what. Now, you know me, I don't want something basic. 
I would be lying if I said I haven't been looking at reclaimed commercial playground equipment and there's some pretty crazy things out there that are tempting me, but I'm not going to get anything until I have a clear idea of what I actually need and where I would put it. I want to make sure that it would be something that would bring Alfie a lot of joy and me a lot of joy. But I can't even refine my ideas until I even decide where I would put something or what. One idea that does keep floating around my head is putting a slide down the slope of the garden because it would be so safe. You're already on the ground, so it wouldn't even matter if you fell off the edge. So I've even thought about doing a slide behind a garden bed so It's there and it's fun, but it's not actually an eyesore. Anyway, these are the things that I'm thinking about. Please do let me know if you have any ideas of how I can solve these problems. I am always thinking about the next thing that I want to do in the garden. But for now, I'm just going to soak in all the things that I've done so far. We've come a really long way in just two years. So for now, I'm going to enjoy the end of summer and get ready for autumn.